G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, James and I are leaving Nundal and heading up to Hanging Rock, then along Barry Road and Hunter Road to do the 20 Creeks. From there we will travel through Elliston and over Barrington Tops before coming down the other side and making our way to Norrit Flat where we will spend the night. This will be a three part series with parts one and two focusing on the first day and part three will show our return journey back towards Tamworth. So stick around, settle back and enjoy the ride. Hanging Rock is a gold mining village in the northern tablelands of New South Wales and is situated about 10 kilometres southeast of Nundal. Gold was first discovered in 1851, sparking a frenzy among prospectors hoping to strike it rich. Miners from all over flocked to the region, creating a bustling community almost overnight. At its peak, Hanging Rock had a population of several thousand people and was made up of numerous small communities some having their own churches, schools, general stores and hotels. Over the next few years, several water races were cut into the landscape, the longest being 23 kilometres long, to service the sluicing requirements of the miners. Joseph Ruzicka arrived at Hanging Rock in 1879 and went prospecting in spite of having little knowledge of his skill. He discovered one of the richest strikes of the Hanging Rock area at Hardens Hill, across from the local cemetery. Here, Joe extracted 30 ounces of gold for every 10 inches that he dug, earning about 3,000 pounds in one day. Today, Hanging Rock has a community hall, a New South Wales rural fire service station, and a few homes. Today, the main industry is agriculture and tourism. At the 2021 census, the population of Hanging Rock was 98. Due to the high altitude of the village, Hanging Rock and the surrounding mountains can occasionally receive a snowfall on the coldest of winter days. Throughout this video, you'll hear excerpts in transcript form of an article that appeared in the Scone Advocate dated the 18th of July, 1930. Voiced by an AI, it describes the journey from Nundal to Moon and Flat. The road from Nundal to Moon and Flat, from a tourist point of view, is the subject of an informative article by Mr. C.A. Lambert of Barrie Station, which has been made available by the Tamworth office of the NRMA. From the road, unsurpassed views of picturesque mountain scenery can be had, which is equal to the best to be found in the mountains of the northern part of the state. Mr. Lambert states that he understands the tourist department intends to investigate the road with the object of making its tourist possibilities more widely known. The road from Nundal to Hanging Rock, seven miles, is good, but steep, the height of the latter point being 1,500 feet above Nundal. Leaving Hanging Rock the road under dry weather conditions is fair, considering the class and altitude of the country. A gang has been at work here for the past few weeks and is doing good work. There is a stretch of six miles along the top of the range, 
rising to 4,400 feet in one place, but it is more of a plateau, and not the sharp rise which might deter a tourist from driving that way. These tops are undulating country of a red soil, and a trifle slippery in wet weather, but there is no chance of a car being bogged, as the surface is only a few inches deep. The scenery is very fine at about 12 miles when the road starts to descend the range. The road to the Barnard River, about two miles below, is of gravel and well graded and drained. There is a signpost at the 14 miles peg. On reaching the foot of the range, the Barnard River is crossed by a new bridge, and then the road runs parallel to the river as far as Barry Station. This section of the road is also good and is being regraded. Interesting choice for a guard dog. He must be used to motorcycles coming through here. Pretty popular ride, this one. So I'm guessing this is the Barnard River, named, I'm guessing that, from the name of the property back up there that we went through before we hit Barry Station. Pretty little thing. Plenty of water in it. I don't believe this is the... Uh, body of water that we'll be crossing when we do the 20 creeks. This must go off in a different direction and then we are we're hitting a tributary of this maybe. I'll have to look that up when I get back to the town. Stand corrected, it's not the Barnard River, it's Ben Hall's Creek. Actually, Phil, you were right the first time. You've been following the Barnard River, but here you are crossing Ben Hall's Creek, which joins the Barnard just after the bridge. Ben Hall's Creek, about two miles from Barrie, is also bridged, so that there are no river crossings between Nundle and Barrie. A nice picnic spot on this road is by the bridge which crosses Hall's Creek. There are a number of gates, but the ratepayers intend to have ramps put in near them next year. We're climbing again. Arriving at Barry Station, which is in country noted for its beauty, the tourist leaves the good or fair roads, as he may care to call them, or even poor, if he wishes to. But taking the nature of the country into account, he will see that the settlers are doing their best to improve the road. Voluntary contributions have been made to have certain parts graveled. 
With the cooperation of an influential body like the NRMA, this road could easily be made first class. Come on, you little tractor, you. Yes. The road from here to Moonen Flat is about 32 miles and is not good for the first eight miles being rough and mountainous. It is believed that the Upper Huntershire will shortly carry out improvements to this stretch of road. It is always possible in dry weather and providing motorists use chains on their cars, also in wet weather, although they must go warily. Well, that was an interesting little section of road that come up on us all of a sudden. We knock it down in the first gear. Just tracked her up at the Himalayan school at that. Schofields Creek is encountered after the eight mile peg and has to be crossed several times. The crossings cannot be made in wet weather, but the creek subsides very quickly.
have crossed a few causeways in my travels, but prior to this, my entire experience of creek crossings was a grand total of one. So to experience and complete the 20 creeks gave me a great sense of achievement, as well as a boost in confidence for future adventures. After crossing this creek, the motorist strikes Glenrock Station about 12 miles from Barrie, and from there to Moon and Flat is an excellent road. 14 miles from Glenrock, Elliston is passed, where the road to Barrington Tops turns off. Elliston is a rural locality in the Upper Hunter region of New South Wales. Originally inhabited by the indigenous Wanarua people, European settlers arrived in the early 19th century, primarily engaging in agriculture and grazing. In the latter part of that century, the prominent family business H.E.A. and V. White acquired Elliston and carried out extensive improvements to both the land and facilities. In the 1920s, Elliston was broken up and sold to different interests. The area gained prominence in the late 20th century when media magnate Kerry Packer acquired vast tracts of land, transforming it into a luxurious private retreat and world-renowned Polo estate. The Packer family's influence has since defined Elliston, making it a significant yet exclusive destination known for its pristine natural beauty and elite sporting facilities. Wisely, the owners of Elliston have decided throughout the years to build their improvements away from the main road through the property. That means for the average person, we don't get to see the polo fields or the world-class golf course, the tennis courts, the swimming pools, the go-kart tracks, and naturally we don't get to see the homestead and surrounding buildings. But what it does mean is that we get to enjoy the splendour of Elliston in all its natural beauty, and that's fine by me. As James and I leave Ellison and make our way down towards Moon and Flat, I'll say farewell for now and thanks for watching part one of this series. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Also leave a comment or a like down below if you wish. Join us in part two as we make our way over Barrington Tops and down towards Gloucester and onto Norwich Flat. Until then then, 